Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to take a very brief look at Star Wars X-Wing. Now this is a miniatures game for two players, ages 14 and up, with the average playtime being between 30 and 45 minutes. Now just as a little backstory, I played a lot of Star Wars when I was a kid. Uh, Star Wars X-Wing, TIE Fighter, X-Wing vs. TIE Fighters, X-Wing Alliance, all of those games were on the PC, mind you. But um, I had a lot of fun playing with the different ships and going on missions and different things like that. Well, I was really surprised to see um, a board game that focused heavily on the ship combat. And that's exactly what this game's all about. Uh, one player will be the Rebel Alliance and one player will be the Imperial Fleet. You'll choose your ships, choose your pilots, and then just have at it to see who comes out on top. So with that said, let's take a brief moment to look at the components and see how the game is played. Alright, now as far as the components are concerned, um, I'm not going to go over every single component. As you can see here, there are a lot of different tokens in the box that do various things. I will say, however, that the game comes with one X-Wing miniature and two TIE Fighter miniatures. Let me see if I can focus in on this so you can see it a little bit better. Alright, now as you can see, they're pretty delicate. Um, you got to be very careful when handling these, but it's a very highly detailed model. There's a little um, tube sticking out the bottom here so it can stand up on its base. It attaches to um, these here. You've got your base here and the pegs that attach to it here. As far as the TIE Fighter models are concerned, this is what they look like. Again, highly detailed, but also very delicate, so you have to be careful. Alright, now as far as these dice are concerned, the game comes with three red dice and three green dice. The red dice are your attack dice, while your green dice are your defense dice. As far as these symbols are concerned, um, this is a regular hit, this is a critical hit, and this is a focus symbol, and I'll explain that a little bit later. As far as your defense dice goes, you've got your evade symbols here, and a focus symbol. These down here are maneuver dials. Basically, each miniature has its own uh, maneuver dial. They're not pilot specific, but rather ship specific. For example, you've got your X-Wing maneuver dial here and your TIE Fighter maneuver dial here. The um, wheel can be rotated, as you can see, to show off different maneuvers. Uh, some are easy and some are difficult. Those in green are easy to make. Where, let's see if I can find a red one. There's a red one. This one is difficult to make. This uh, sends the TIE Fighter forward uh, uh, an equivalent of three spaces and then uh, turns it about 180 degrees. That's a st uh, very stressful uh, maneuver and a stress token is added, but I'll get into that later. Um, each ship has its own maneuver capabilities. The TIE Fighters, while being more agile and um, able to maneuver a bit better than the X-Wings can, they are lightly armored and can't take as many hits as the X-Wing can. So each ship has its own maneuver dial to represent its uh, particular abilities. To go along with these maneuver dials, you have these maneuver templates. Whereas these are more um, of a planning function, these are the actual application, meaning that um, these will assist players in moving their miniatures around the table. Basically, they'll pick a maneuver on the dial here, and then they'll take their ship and then find the corresponding uh, maneuver template and move their ship from one end of the template to the other. As far as these larger cards are concerned, these are pilot cards, and basically players will be able to pick from these and attach them to the miniatures um, that they bring into the game. For example, these are all TIE Fighter pilots. You've got uh, Night Beast, you've got Mauler Mythil, you've got Dark Curse, Black Squadron Pilot, Obsidian Squadron Pilot, Academy Pilot. As far as your X-Wing pilots are concerned, you have Biggs Dark Lighter. Uh, Red Squadron Pilot, Rookie Pilot, and Luke Skywalker. Now, I'm not going to go into the card specifics too much here, but suffice it to say this number in orange is pilot skill. For the most part, that determines the player order or ship order during any particular turn. You've got your attack value here, defense value, hull value, shield value, 
and you've got the available actions this particular pilot can make on their turn. And you've also got a uh, point value in the bottom right hand corner. Basically as you're drafting your team um, you'll be observing these points here um, because those get added up and put toward your point cap. And I'll explain that in a little bit. As far as these smaller cards are concerned, these are upgrade cards. Again, players will be building a team of ships and pilots uh, at the start of the game, but they'll also be able to attach these upgrade cards to these ships to give them an edge. For example, these astromech cards, um, you can attach these astromech units to various ships. The TIE fighters can't handle them, but the X-Wings can. You can see what uh, upgrades a ship can handle by looking in the bottom here. This one can't handle any upgrades, whereas this X-Wing can handle an astromech ac upgrade and a proton torpedo upgrade. But as far as uh, the upgrades go, you've got astromech droid upgrades, R2-D2, R2, F2, uh, proton torpedoes, you've got marksmanship, and determination. Each upgrade card has a cost associated with it, so you'll need to keep, you'll need to keep that in mind whenever you're setting up your team. These other cards here are damage cards. Basically, as players take damage to their ships during the game, they'll be drawing these cards and placing them near their ship card. This side represents a regular hit, while this side represents a critical hit. If a player takes a critical hit, they'll need to flip the card over to this side and observe these effects uh, for the rest of the game, or at least until their ship is destroyed. You've got Blinded Pilot, for example. The next time you attack, do not roll any attack dice. Then flip this card face down. So these uh, critical hits can actually uh, really damage the pilot or the ship in a particular way. The last thing I want to briefly touch on is this range ruler over here. It's two-sided, one for the Imperial side and one for the Rebel Alliance side. It also has three different um, markers on it, one, two, and three. Basically, this helps players determine um, whether or not there are any bonuses when attacking and defending. Um, if an attacker um, attacks a target and the, def or the defender falls within this range here in the one, if it's really close, the attacker gets to roll an extra attack die. Whereas if the defender falls within this range here, the defender gets to roll an extra defense die. So um, not only will this help determine range, but um, each ship has its own firing arc. So you can sort of just branch it off from here if you need to to determine if, a, uh, if the defender falls within uh, the hit box, so to speak. Before players actually set up the game, they'll need to agree on a squad point cap. Again, a squad point cap, at least that's what I call it, um, is the total number of points that are allowed in any particular game. The larger the cap, the more that you can add to your game. Now, the game only comes, uh, this core game only comes with two TIE Fighters and an X-Wing, but as you buy expansions and more ships, you'll be able to increase your point cap, if you so choose to, and add more ships to the mix. Each pilot... Uh, and each upgrade card has a, a cost associated with it in the bottom right hand corner. Luke Skywalker, for example, is worth 28 points, and this R2F2 Astromech upgrade card is worth 3. The manual suggests a starting uh, game of 31 points, but again, players are free to adjust that however they want to. Now as far as what I've got going on here, um, I've got one X-Wing, I've got the Luke Skywalker, um, pilot and the R2-F2 upgrade. Uh, of course you've got your um, maneuver dial here, you've got your dice, damage cards, range ruler, uh, you've got your maneuver templates over here. As far as the two TIE fighters are concerned, you've got uh, Dark Curse. He's one of the more advanced TIE fighters. He has a bunch of, of special actions here and has a point cost of 16. And uh, Night Beast, he's also a pretty good TIE Fighter. He's got a bunch of special actions here and has a point cost of 15. These add up to 31, so no upgrade cards can be attached. Not that they could anyway. There's no uh, symbols down here to show that they can handle an upgrade card. Now there's just one or two things I want to briefly touch on. Some ships have the ability to handle shields. So what you'll do is you'll take a look at the um, blue number here on the card and equip that many shields onto that particular card. Basically these help negate damage. 
And if you don't want to play a dogfight scenario, the manual comes with about three different scenarios. You've got the political escort here, you've got the asteroid run, and you've got the dark whisper scenario. The, um, each scenario will tell you how to set it up, what uh, tokens to use. The box comes with the appropriate tokens. Um, I didn't show you these earlier, but you've got your asteroids here, you've got the uh, senator's shuttle, different things like that. Now the game itself is broken up over a series of rounds, and each round consists of four phases. You've got the planning phase, the activation phase, the combat phase, and the end phase. During the first phase, the planning phase, each player will secretly choose a maneuver using their dials. When they're done, they'll place it face down. During the second phase, or the activation phase, these dials are all revealed at once. After that, they are resolved in order of pilot skill starting with the lowest. In this case, uh, Night Beast has a skill of 5, Dark Curse has a skill of 6, and Luke Skywalker has a skill of 8. So Night Beast would resolve his ship first. To do that, we'll go ahead and take a look at the wheel and see what Night Beast chose. According to this, it's going to be a uh, maneuver to the right, uh, a total of two quote-unquote spaces. So to do that, we'll need to find uh, the matching template. We'll place one end right in front of his ship like so. And we'll just simply move his ship from one end of the template to the other. Assuming that ship doesn't have any stress tokens on it, and I'll get to that in a minute, they can perform an action. Some upgrade cards allow you to perform an action, while some actions are listed right on the card. In this case, Night Beast can perform a focus action, a barrel roll action, or an evade action. Let's just assume for the moment that they want to perform an evade action, so they'll find the appropriate token in the box and place it next to their TIE Fighter. Now once that is done, uh, the next pilot will make their turn. In this case, the uh, Dark Curse character has a pilot skill of 6, while Luke Skywalker has an 8, so Dark Curse would go next. To do that, we'll take a look at their dial. In this case, it's four quote-unquote spaces ahead, and then it's a 180 degree turn. So we need to find the appropriate template for that. Place it like so, and it's not going to be perfect, but you get the idea. 180 degree turn, and we're done. Now, because this was a stressful maneuver, um, a stress token gets added to this particular uh, ship. Again, you can tell if it's uh, stressful by looking at the color. Red means that it's stressful. Green will actually clear a stress token. Now, a stress token will prevent that particular ship from performing an action right after moving. They also cannot perform another stressful action until they clear the current one. Finally, Luke Skywalker will make his move. In this case, it's just a simple um, quote-unquote one space turn to the right. So we'll go ahead and find that appropriate template. There we go. Place it like so, and we'll simply turn it. Now, this was colored green, so if he had a stress token on his ship, it would be removed. He doesn't have one, so that really doesn't matter. Now, at this point, Luke Skywalker can play an action um, if he so chooses to. He's got this uh, focus ability here, and this target lock. The target lock has a few different uses. Uh, some cards, like the Proton Torpedo upgrade, will require a target lock in order to fire it. That is, The Proton Torpedo card is a secondary weapon that increases the attack strength um, for that particular turn. Focus, let's just go ahead and do that one because it's a little bit easier. Now, instead of playing one of those two actions, um, he could, if he wanted to, play this action. It says action right on the card, R2F2. Increase your agility value by one until the end of this game round, meaning that you can roll an extra defense die. Once players are done moving their ships and locking in actions, they'll go ahead and jump into the combat phase. This is basically where ships can start shooting at each other. You'll start with the uh, pilot with the highest skill level and work your way down. Now, whenever a pilot goes to shoot, they'll need to see if the target is within the firing arc. 
there's one there and one there. So anything in between this arc is fair game. And also the range is observed. You've got a ship within the one range here. Again, as I was explaining at the beginning of the video, um, any ship within the one range, the attacker gets to roll an extra attack die. Unfortunately, I only have three dice here, so I'll just have to roll one an extra time. All right, so now we're ready to attack. Uh, we've got Luke Skywalker here and Night Beast here. Now, Luke Skywalker will roll a total of four dice. Again, this is because um, his attack value is three on his card, but um, Night Beast with, is within that one range on the ruler. So again, Luke Skywalker will roll four die. Now, uh, Night Beast will roll three defense die as indicated on his card here. All right, now let's assume for the moment that both the attacker and the defender rolled their appropriate dice. And let's also assume that the fourth red die ended up being blank. So we have these values to work with here. You've got one regular hit, one critical hit, and one uh, focus icon, whereas the evader rolled one evade, uh, one focus, and one blank. Now, Luke Skywalker has this focus token next to his ship. That allows him to turn any focus icons over to a regular hit. So we'll do that. Now we've got two regular hits and one critical hit. Now, um, Night Beast has an evade token next to his ship. That will automatically negate one uh, of these damages. So let's go ahead and put that there for the time being. And now we'll start to cancel each other out. Um, the regular hits are negated first and the critical hits are uh, negated after that. So this is an evade, this is a regular hit, those cancel. This is a hit, this is an evade, that cancels out. Finally, um, you're left with these here. Had this particular pilot had performed the focus action, which this ship can't do, well, actually it can, but it didn't use the focus action, so it can't use this at all. You're just left with this critical hit uh, symbol here. Now, to resolve that, a uh, card is damaged or drawn from the damage deck, and because it's a critical hit, it is played face up on the pilot card in question. In this case, it's an injured pilot. All players must ignore your pilot ability and all of your upgrade cards. Now that Luke Skywalker's combat is resolved, we'll go ahead and resolve the next pilot's attack, um, which would be uh, Dark Curse, which is this character here. To do that, we'll need to see if the X-Wing is within range and within the firing arc. In this case, it's within the firing arc at a range of two, so no uh, bonuses as far as attack and defense is concerned. Luke Skywalker's agility is two, so that's two green dice. And uh, Dark Curses has two attacks, so that's two attack dice. So at this point, uh, both players will go ahead and roll their dice. And let's just say that um, Luke Skywalker was unlucky. He rolled two blanks. And let's just say that um, Dark Curse here rolled a critical and a regular hit. Now, Luke Skywalker has a special ability on his card. When defending, you may change one of your uh, focus results to an evade result. In this case, he didn't roll any focus, so the hit doesn't matter. Now, at this point, we'll go ahead and resolve these two hits. Um, however, Luke Skywalker has two shields, so he would not need to pick up any cards from the damage deck. In this case, um, his two shields would be destroyed and removed from the game, and that would be the end of that particular combat turn. Finally, you have this TIE Fighter up here, Night Beast. Um, unfortunately, no ships fall within his firing arc. And that would end the combat phase. The last phase, or the end phase, just simply involves a little bit of cleanup. Some of the unused or used tokens will be placed back off into the uh, separate pile or box, and uh, some of them will actually persist, like the stress tokens will persist, targeting lock, if that was done, that'll persist, and so on and so forth. And this will continue over a series of rounds until there's only one team left standing. Again, a ship is destroyed when the total number of damage cards equals or exceeds the number listed here. This is the hull value. The last team or last player standing will win the game. And there you have it. That's just a very brief look at Star Wars X-Wing, the miniatures game. I didn't cover all of the rules in the manual, but this should just give you a general idea as far as how the game is played. 
You can check out my review at www.dadsgamingaddiction.com or you can click on the link in the below description that'll take you there as well. This is Vince, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.